Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Real quick, before I get into this video, I want to tell you about PopCultureZone.com. They are a website specializing in comic books, some of the hottest variants, and CGC comics. You can get raw comics. They specialize in lots of 10. And for those raw comics, if you are shipping to the domestic United States, you only pay $4.99 flat rate shipping. PopCultureZone.com. Now on to the video. You really want to know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. Oh! What is going on, guys? Brown Superman's Comics back once again. These guests don't really need to be introduced. You've seen them on here before. But we also have another special guest. Very, very special edition of the Simple Men's Comics and Friends podcast. That's right. We have David Boer, Drew Zucker, the creators of Canto. But most importantly... All right, sorry to say this to you guys, David Drew, but we got, I would say, Canto's number one fan in the house, Lala Schultze. Lala, how are you doing? Woo! Fantastic. I yeah, am so like excited from... that the three of us get to be on this, this uh, podcast to interview Canto's number one fan. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it feels Incredible. like because, I mean, from the get-go, from we've had We've now had David and Drew on this channel. This is the fourth time we had him on to talk Canto. We had him talk to, to the uh, Clockwork Fairies. We talked about Holloman. We're also getting ready to talk about Lionhearted, but we had to have the number one fan on here. To both Dave and Drew were like, absolutely. So we've been fighting for this. So we got a couple announcements. One, Lala, she's a brand new mommy too. So congratulations to that. <laughs> Thank you. And... While we're recording this today, Drew Zucker, the artist of Canto, is celebrating his 21st birthday. Say congratulations to him. <laughs> I've only <laughs> were 21. It's like I Look said, I remember that. my first spirit. No. Yeah, really. <laughs> just, just slightly over 21, but it is Drew's birthday, so happy birthday to him. But guys, Super excited to have you on here once again. Always have a great time when you guys come on. Lala is always in the chat, always on the Instagram. She's always in there. Her and I are the ones. We team up together when there's those convention exclusives start hitting the website. But we're here to talk about. She has, she has also gotten on IDW's radar because I noticed that they um, will repost yep. your fan posts, Laura. So All the time. Um, Got to tag them, you know? Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, thank you enough. I, I'll say, I'll first off say that you have been a fan for you, as long as we've been working on this. You've been mm -hmm. right there at the forefront, sharing and posting and boosting and introducing people to Canto. And it's just, um, it's it was, a, it's a, a huge difference. You know, yeah. we know that it, as the fan base grows, we know why. And honestly, you're kind of the center of that universe. So we're really just, we want you to know that we're so appreciative of of all of that. And in fact, you you um you just had a, a baby who is maybe Canto cosplaying and training in the next right. few years. Oh, yeah. Canto yeah. Yeah. Ah, look at that! So, what, right here. She's gonna yell at him when he spits up on it. Yeah, I was gonna ask if he no. just vomit all over it. I'm not using this in real life. This is just. <laughs> oh. He's never gonna. I mean, I mean, are you I was kidding gonna me? say it's like fulfilling everything I was told growing up that your work is nothing but vomit on the page. <laughs> you could, yeah, bring it to the next time we're in in person, and we'll 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 sign it for you. Yeah, he has a onesie too. I'm gonna put him in the onesie and just hopefully he doesn't spit up on it because I'll need to take a photo of him, you know. And we'll get the nice gentle felt tip markers so that yep. we can sign it while he's wearing it, right? <laughs> yes. It's like that's how everybody else is signing a baby. I'm literally signing a baby. Sign the forehead. Everybody has their book stacks of books in line, and then Laura comes up and she's like, Can you sign my baby? <laughs> yes, yes, we can. 9.8. 9.8. <laughs> that's a 10. What are you talking about? There we go. It'll take it'll take CGC three months to get him back to you. <laughs> Yeah, so it's been one heck of a journey. And to go back to what you guys were saying about uh, Lala, especially with all her posting, it makes my social media posting for Canto super easy because a lot of times I just share her story and then yeah. <laughs> good to go. But Canto's 
been one hell of a journey. It's, uh, it's great to feel like we've been part of it. You guys have come on here before Canto, the very first issue at FOC, and we're talking about and talked about how we felt, how great this story has been. Um, my former partner, Jack, Andy Tomlin from CBSI, we were all on here talking how, how great that would be. And to see it come to fruition, seven seasons in a movie, we, all, we almost have the seven seasons, but we got the movie coming, right? We, yes. Yeah. It yeah. Fades. Yep. I posted the other day that um, Lionhearted number one is going to be our uh, 16th single issue in it. And yeah, we had plans crazy. for, <laughs> honestly, like one issue. We were hoping that it would get set up and then we got the six. And then it, from there. It one of the great things to watch is, is, that much. is the traction that it has built since Canto came out and then you saw mm -hmm. the later printings and you and it has been great to see more and more people between retailers between fans between you know uh, fans children we've talked about it before where it doesn't have that stigma of all ages that, that you think about we truly call this an all ages book from you know every person that reads it whether youth to elder gets something from this story and it's been one great ride ever since I've enjoyed it. We talked about one time at Wizard of Oz, all types of name comparisons of relating this story to something someone's familiar with. What are some of the other kind of comparisons that you guys have heard, you know, through, through making your rounds? Because you guys have gone to conventions, you've done signings, you've written multiple books, multiple websites, multiple YouTube channels, and everyone always has positive feedback. Yeah, I mean, as far as the comparisons we get, uh, a lot of the 80s, Dark Crystal, yeah. Everything Story, Wizard of Oz was the insp inspiration in Dante's Inferno. Um, we get a lot Rings. of Lord of the Rings. We get a lot of the movie Nine. Um, yeah. Which, which you know, tonally is a lot darker than Canto, but still people, people that, that seems to um, come to the forefront. We've seen some references to, um, uh, oh God, what's the, what's the animation? director uh we've seen some references to uh miyazaki right oh yeah well, well princess Mononoke my friends came up uh yeah night, just actually. just recently um so that and uh yeah so it's th yeah. those sorts of things that dark fantasy that i think is lost because you keep looking at <laughs> what comes out from disney I, I love disney and they have they have great movies but it's all very you know, there's one one lane yeah. they stay in, which is don't get too dark and always be, you know, super yeah, Canto kid definitely friendly. straddles that and almost goes a little bit over the side for a little bit, but then it always comes back to almost I want to say feel good story because, but it, there's you always have hope within that, and there's parts of that story where you see it and it's and you get to a certain page or certain panels, and one thing that this story's done that you know read a lot of comics. But this story has continuously pulled that emotion out of me by reading it and kind of feel like, one, you're feeling the story, but then I feel like you mentioned it just a few minutes ago, where I'm a kid again in the 80s yeah. watching all those great fantasy movies that, you know, not that it's related to it, but like Time Bandits and, and all these other ones that you get that fantasy. Secret of Nim. Yeah. yeah, Secret of Nim. There, Destroyed me. There's a, part of, there's a part of Canto that I've kind of realized like listening to people just talk about 80s movies is that when you were a kid watching them there was there was this sense of like you're watching it and it's almost like you sit there and you're like am I supposed to be able to to watch this like this is kind of this is kind of dark uh and Canto definitely has some of that where it definitely masquerades itself up front as you know just you know, it's a cutesy little tin guy, and then you dig into the story, and it's like there's a little bit more there. It's um, it's very layered, which is great, right? And I think that's part of what the appeal is across the all ages brand, and that's that's what we really set out to do. You know, we said it before that we we have our rules about things we can't do: no nudity, no no extreme violence, none of that stuff. But there's no definitely no swearing. There's definitely elements to it, though that you know, if you're 10 years old, you're reading this, like, I don't necessarily 100% grasp every 
layered element that's there, but they definitely grasp enough of it that they feel like they're not being pandered to and they're enjoying the story. Now, I also want to... Laura, um, hold on. Do you, can I call you Laura? Or you want me to call you Lala? No, you can call me Laura. Okay, just want to make sure. I didn't know if that was your 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 secret identity. I go by both. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, Laura, one thing I wanted to ask you: we, you know, David and Drew and other people that have been on here multiple times, we've talked about this. But one thing we haven't gotten from you being you on here is when did you first when you first read Canto? You know, how did you start to how did you develop your fandom? for Canto, was it like, hey, I knew right off the bat, just seeing the co the cover and kind of the, the solicit, or did you kind of pick the first issue up? And I'm kind of curious about how your fandom grew into Canto and what emotions or even nostalgia or reminiscent, you know, what, what makes you such a fan of Canto? I loved it from the absolute beginning. Like I was always like, I read a lot of comics too, but I don't read a lot of like indie comics. And so I think I heard of it like from your YouTube channel, you were talking about it coming out. And I'm just like, I'll check that out. And the minute I read it, I was just completely hooked because it's just such a unique comic. And I just, it was, fell in love with it. Number one fan from the beginning. <laughs> the one thing that was great about it is, you know, the first volume, first chapter, first volume, but you have one protagonist, which is, you know, Kanto, of course, and he's trying to save save the woman he loves. And he didn't even have a name. It wasn't given a name, but the woman that he cares about gave him the name. And that's, you know, cr crime number one. Thing. You can't do that. Yeah. And it's a done <laughs> out of love. And so the first chapter, we have the, the one protagonist trying to save the woman he loves before time runs out. And then you get, you're like, oh, that's a great story. But then between the clockwork fairies, which you're like, oh, it doesn't really tie into it. Cause I remember Dave and Drew coming on here. It's like, it doesn't really tie into it, but you start seeing those, those plots yeah. weave in and out of the whole story. And it's great to see how they tie into it. It's almost like, I want to say Easter egg, but then we get into the, the it's second a reward. Part. Yeah. It's yeah. a reward for, um, for readers who come, who start at the beginning, because I, a lot of people have said it's easy to jump on sort of anywhere and you kind of get, what happened before, right. but <clears throat> if you started from the beginning, you get all those extra rewards. If you yeah. knew about Clockwork Fairies, then City of Giants was much more rewarding yeah. because you know who that Mysterian <laughs> witch is and what she's done previously. Um, if you've read Lionhearted and then the next volume and you've read City of Giants, you know what, you have the backstory for what's gonna happen coming, yeah. coming down the road. Yeah, and yeah. you guys do a great job of teasing it in the panels of like, hey, you know, want to know what the heck we're talking about? <laughs> read Clockwork Fairies or read. They City do that in the big two all the time, and I'm like, screw that! I'm going to put editors' notes. Why can't we do that? <laughs> but it was great, and and like I said, when then you get into chapter two, and it just bust wide open to almost a a, a canto verse, as we you guys have even come on here and said before. Where now you got supporting characters, you got a bigger world to deal with, a bigger sandbox, mm -hmm. you know, which is. I'm sure so much easier to draw for Drew than just, you know, the one Canto character. But like who so is just jumping simple. in and reading one story and not going back and reading the rest? Who are those people? I because don't know, honestly. Who are those people? How can you not want to read the whole thing and have your clock ripped out of <laughs> your chest? I'm you know, the kind that, of, yeah, true. That, that note is in there for people, you know, we, we always felt like even with the success of volume one that there was continued readership to be found uh, which is why we've constantly been out here doing promotion for it because every time we launch we feel like there's new readership coming in so every with that you know our goal was to make this as easy for new readership that jumps on board to know where they're going what they're doing with where things fall in line for story just to simplify it for for readers because well, i that think that's some... you know we want to expand our reader base and if our uh, you know that expansion comes from people coming on to lionhearted or clock or uh, hollow men or city of giants or any we had, i think we had new readers on city of giants because it was just a yeah. short little three three issue um we want to give them the ability to if they like it to, here's where you go back you know here's the other things that are available 
come back, you know, catch up and keep going with us. So, um, you know, ideally we want to have readers come on now and continue, go back and continue forward rather than just having them come on for like the three issue mini or one of the mm -hmm. arcs and then just not continue. So that, that's what we do. Also, what's great about it is it, it, it works as single issues because you're always excited about it, but then it's so much better when the trades come out and then you read it again in the trade. And I'm hoping we get eventually a Canto omnibus that has all of it in there, super hardcover, some extra commentary, some extra <laughs> uh, draft drawings, you know, kind of behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, it, it's- Yo, I, IDW. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> we, yes, I think that is um, in the cards. I think we have to uh, go forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put the call to action out right now. I know Lala Lord Lala is gonna do it, and any viewers right now start tagging IDW. Let them know that we're gonna want that hardcover omnibus, you know. And we hope that it's just a volume this. one omnibus. We want with, this <laughs> with much more volumes of Canto to come. I'm talking like Canto Volume Twelve. This is I'm so, literally I'm exhausted. There, <laughs> there are like three of these that are just filled with design work for that book. There is enough material to fill its own on the box. Right. <clears throat> My idea would be to have a, a volume one that collects, um, if I only had a heart, Clockwork Fairies, Hollow Men, and then the second volume, which collects uh, City of Giants, Lionhearted, Place Like Home. And have those two volumes yeah. and we need uh, them in multiple the type editions we need like your regular hardcover we need like a, a slip case signs. type type cover signed cover you know kind of different players that you're seeing right now whether and if they have if idw has to do it for with kickstarter we're seeing a lot of comic book publishers do it through kickstarter now as well there's another avenue to do it but idw i'm telling you right now there's enough canto fans out there that are wanting this and please make it happen. Right, Laura? Right. <laughs> and we want a free comic book day, Canto number one. Yes, reprint issue number one even just for free reprint. comic book day. Reprint all day. Hey, it's be like the Hunger Games, I think. Yeah. There's only like, of three printings of issue number one, there's only a total of probably 10,000, yeah. 12,000 copies that exist. And we know what happened to the first printing with when it came out you know yeah reprint issue Doggered number one it's a good printing <laughs> it's worked out well for uh, a number of other successful books uh indie books over the last year absolutely even if i mean you never want to say make it you know kind of how they do the image first and things like that but if they did it for free comic book day or even did like the how marvel does it with the facsimiles or the true believers you know yeah. give us you'll grow so many more great fans and it'll bring more people to IDW if they start a line like that. It, I, it, it's the trick. The, the trick is always, Canto by design was made to be a book that was easy for new readership to come into, either from who are already participating in, in the industry or from outside. And the more we're able to put that first issue out to people to show them what this is all about, the better. Laura? What were you going to say? Oh, I didn't interrupt. You got to jump in. We are blabbermouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, just, Feel free to interrupt. I, I'd like a, a Brian knows one question. We could fill a full hour. So, yeah. We, we have to be right. Saying, I just need to hype it up. Yeah. Hype. So, I want to take the moment we've talked about kind of Canto so far. Before we get into the up and coming, Canto third chapter, Lionhearted. We also had the big news that there's a Canto animated movie in the works, right? Can you say I that? Know what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we saw it. we saw um, Will and Jada Pickett Smith's uh, production company or studio, Westbrook Studios, has optioned Canto to um, make a an animated film out of it, and. Uh, I'm very thrilled to say that Drew and I are executive producing and I'm writing the 
script for it. So, you know, it's going to be, it's going to have that, that heart of Canto in it, no matter that, how it's sort that's of. That's always great to hear. Because it's, it's one thing when they're like, oh yeah, we're going to option it. And then it kind of like, it's their yeah. version of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Or they bring a writer in who, who dives in and, it's, and yeah, we've been, you know, we've, through conversations and things, we're, we're, we're sort of navigating that. And I think they're yeah. very, they've been very respectful about um, keeping our vision intact. Obviously yeah. it's gonna be different as a feature because you know we're gonna build out the world mm -hmm. and the story a little bit. But um, we're keeping it true to that first volume. Uh, plot wise, it's just gonna be fuller because there's a lot of things you can't do in comics that you can obviously do on the screen. I know it's probably early to tell, but has there been any conversations? Because you just said that's going to be the first volume. Has there been any conversations of the second volume or any of the the others possibly occurring, depending? Maybe? Kind of? Tell us. <laughs> Viewers demand to know, man. <laughs> West, next your next target. It's like IDW, we got you. Now Westbrook will come in for you next. <laughs> I want to know, is there going to be like a Canto video game? Are we talking Canto Pops? Funkos, yes. Hurt? merch we hope <laughs> yeah i think it's all going to be on the on the um heels of uh success yeah if it goes to streaming i mean there's you know the, the world is wide open right now if it goes to streaming i would think that we would get a green light for any sort of sequel based on viewership and mm -hmm. if there's word of mouth um you know if people are telling everybody else it's on netflix you know go watch it we loved it it becomes one of those like top 10 viewed yeah. it gets there then i think there's a lot of bigger chance that it gets greenlit for a, a sequel and at that point i, I they're going to be exploring all of these different options i'm sure uh so yeah i we'll mean, see I, how it I goes can, i i can tell you just from our conversations with them they are th this was not an option and forget about it sort of deal the the level of support that we've gotten from them and enthusiasm on their end, they they are excited about this thing and they they are all in on it. So yeah. you know, the the opportunity for it to to keep going it is very much there. It's obviously dependent on how it how it does, how it succeeds in the world, but we really lucked out with having a partner that's this this invested in what we're doing. We're not right. going to get some added character that no one wants, like a Canto Jar Jar Binks, are we? <laughs> <laughs> He's part mechanical. <laughs> He's got big floppy ears. Oh, we too, cannot. We, we, we have divulged just right to the edge. Of I know. The yep. boundary of what we can do. You know, as we always try to pull the thread on there and then, you know, try to get you guys There'd in trouble somehow. But. Five years from now, Brian, I'm totally going to rib you when we had this conversation and you literally asked us, is there going to be a Jar Jar Binks in it? <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to live that down. To... <laughs> Check the background. He's in there. And I'm going to, and I'm going to spin it and I'm going to be like, Brian really wanted a Jar Jar Binks in it. That's why he asked. <laughs> you still need a heart to play in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> We've also cast the voice. <laughs> yeah. <there we> go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so far, we've talked about Canto. We've talked about the anime movie that's coming that is in development. But you guys also, we just just passed FOC where you have that volume three, that Canto Lionhearted number one coming out, right? Yeah. Next week, uh, the 14th. So the great thing about that is Laura and I both got advanced copies that destroyed themselves as soon as we finished reading it and like scanned our retinas so we no longer <laughs> have it so please do not ask me for it but read the first issue picks up pretty much right where we left off and it's instantly a great first issue kicking off more into that adventure i not to not to you better not say it not to make don't david say get don't a, say it a bigger <laughs> ego than he already has but i you kind of mentioned it with Lord of the Rings. I told Drew that it felt very token-esque at that time of like, you know, almost like Lord of the Rings where the, the, you're seeing this journey take off. And now here they are going into this distant land, trying to get that final battle to take on the Shrouded Man, right? 
I'm trying to say stuff I, without spoiling stuff as well. Sorry. I thought you were going to say that the opening pages were all, the artwork was amazing, but <laughs> I didn't put any words in there. <laughs> that was, that was stuff Drew and, I, Drew and I were uh, messaging offline. Like, man, script sucked. <laughs> yeah, we finally got him out of the way so we can do what we want. <laughs> the art's amazing. <laughs> oh, I that was one thing. Recognize. It's yeah. so good. I was so excited to read it. Like, I can't. Yeah, she had like the baby back there crying. Pipe I know. I was like, I gotta read this right. <laughs> baby in one arm, comic in the other. <laughs> yeah, I gotta finish this. She's telling her um, husband, "Babe, babe, flip the page for me." <laughs> yeah. Press right, I, uh, swipe right. We we did we did uh, reduce the number of words specifically for you, Laura, because we knew that you could probably only take you know ten minutes or less to read the article to read the issue away from Thank the baby. You. So. Um, <laughs> We're really excited about this arc because this arc and the next arc really feel like um, it, it feels like Lord of the Rings in that, uh, you know, the first movie sets off. It's like the first movie always could stand on its own. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for the Battle of the Five Armies and or was that Game of Thrones? <laughs> that was the Hobbit. That was the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah. That was fine. Um, but then the second uh, Two Towers and Return of the King really felt like it became more um cohesive not cohesive but it just felt like that those were continuations. it has more of a story to tell like it, and you could it, lump it, them together and it, it was yeah, just it's one like big it's story. like a snowballing event where you know they're picking up all these allies to kind of take on this shrouded man and it's been great to read yeah so so um lionhearted uh is about canto uh uh gathering more allies and one of the great allies he sees out there is the former slavers that have now gone into hiding to stay away from the shrouded man and he knows how you know psychologically fraught that is to go ask these creatures who had kept you enslaved to now fight alongside of you um but he knows he needs more forces if if when the shrouded man is going to come for them so he and there's a little descent in the ranks and we're going to see that start playing out um so he goes and he tries to find uh where the uh former slavers uh are hiding and i can't even tell you what the they have a name but i don't think we say it until the second issue right i don't think yeah i don't think it comes up till the did you learn issue. what the name of the race is I'm trying to remember. Issue. The thing is with your names, <laughs> I just remember as those guys because at the times I don't remember the names because it's not like it's Bob. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I don't okay. think we I, we mention it in the second issue. So um, they 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 go and they search out um, these former slavers and they have to convince them to uh, come out of hiding and fight. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be taken back into captivity by the Shrouded Man. And so the theme that we're exploring in this, uh, if you are following along at home, if I only had a heart, was very much about um, the Tin Man, the Hollow Man, very much about the Scarecrow, Lionhearted, it's going to be about uh, fear and courage. The Lion, right. Fear and courage and what you let, um, what, what you lead with. Do you let fear leave, uh, lead you or do you let courage lead you? And that's um, where we're going to see it go before the big finale in a, a place like home. Are we going to see the Furies go back to who they were before the Shrouded Man kind of made yeah. them the Furies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I will say that. I'm going to spoil. I'm going to, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I will tell you, yes, absolutely. That is um, something that we really wanted to explore in this arc is how did the Shrouded Men corrupt these? Did you you started to get a hint at it at the end of Hollow Men, right? Where it's like, hey, there's 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 people. I mean, you, you kind of knew it before, but you kind of see it in that story where, hey, there's actually you know there's there's female characters behind just these furies, or I would almost call them hunters or or lieutenants lieutenants for the Shrouded Man. Right. And, and, you know, Kanto is so small. How, you know, how is he ever going to face these furies, these, these brutal, you know, creatures? 
and he can only roll and block and dodge and do all these things and run away and get help from friends. Um, he can only do it so many times. So he has to find a way to stop them from attacking, basically, from, from hunting him. And the only way that he's going to do that is to, uh, oh God, I don't know, I don't want to spoil it, but. <laughs> Canto does some stuff and fixes some things and then bang. I'll just say that Sorry. he forces them to um, confront the, the humanity that they once had and convince them to stop doing, to, to, to break free. Just like everybody is doing in this entire story, this entire, you know, adventure is, they're breaking away from the Shrouded Men. They're trying to break yeah. those bonds that the Shrouded Men has built. And this is another way that you see um, these, these, these it, it, captive characters breaking away from the influence of the Shrouded Men. And, and one of the themes that you see play out in here is, you know, Big things come in small packages. I mean, Canto and all of them, they're all small, tiny people. And then put it in your face in City of Giants where the Giants are say, don't you say it or, you know, don't you sit there and say, uh, what is it again? Like Size uh, doesn't matter. Size doesn't matter, right? And then the witch goes on about, I'm going to say it. But <laughs> you, you see that theme and then it's kind of like just bam in your face, kind of like not poking fun out of it, but it is there. And it's great. It's one of those underdog stories that everyone can get behind i think that's another reason why people enjoy seeing this it's it's the same stuff why people like lord of the rings like never ending story yeah. like wizard of oz but it's one of those great themes that's carrying on and to see it play out even more especially with the emotion being drawn out you know hey and by the way you might be a group of people but not all your friends and your, your allies are going to agree with every decision you make you see those decisions play out it's it's just been a great story so far that was a really exciting thing to realize that you that we've we've finally been telling the story long enough that there's there's story elements and character moments where you can now play with the idea that not everybody is going to get along within the ranks with each other and that you can start introducing conflict in areas that i think is unexpected for a story like this i have a question in the canto city of giants number three <clears throat> Pharaoh, I saw Drew on your Facebook. Someone made a comment about Warhammer, and I was just like, "Oh, Warhammer!" Because my husband used to play Warhammer, so I know a little bit about it. Was Pharaoh like inspired by anything Warhammer? Uh, so Warhammer is kind of a huge touchstone for me. Uh, I I do love to go back to Warhammer just to get ideas for certain things and just because they've kind of for the last 40 years or whatever they've set the standard of you know fantasy and lore building um pharaoh is actually a mix of of a it, david wanted a lion so it's that's what the crystals are the crystals are meant to be the main but he had to have horns and the issue I was running into was, okay, he has to have this horn, but he's mostly made of metal. So he's kind of a play off of a Thundercat, almost. Um, he's a Thundercat that sheet metal with uh, the crystals creating more of the lion design. Was it also, was it Thundercats or Voltron? What's Voltron, the that's it, sorry. Voltron is the one with the cat. They yeah. get in the cats that then form the, the robot, yeah. right? That, that, that was sorry. the Voltron cat was yeah. kind of the structural inspiration for it with, you know, the extra things that, that Drew added on. Nice. So, but War so I, saw Warhammer I saw that Warhammer comment and I was like, I was like, I kind of see that. I kind of see that inspiration. There, I mean, Warhammer's built a massive world for itself, and its lore building is just insane if you mm -hmm. dig into it. Um, and so there's definitely some inspiration that, that comes from that. But, you know, we're pulling from all over the place these days. I mean, there's even more so than we were initially. It, it's just, it's coming from everywhere. And I think this is an example where I probably told Drew, it needs to be... He, he he needs to be like a lion type thing with the horn and 
big, much oh, yeah. bigger than Canto, and here's like the size. And, and then I just shoved it onto his desk. It was like, it, go. And then you realize the logistical nightmare that comes <laughs> with, okay, this horn, Pharaoh is meant to be bigger than Canto, so he's got to be big. But this horn can't just be, if it, Canto's meant to bring this thing back, but at the same time, it can't be this tiny little nub on his nose. So the uh, the design process on him was uh, intense to, to figure out the logistics of how that worked. And and all I know is I gave him that, you know, very little to work with, and we got City of Giants out of it, and I'm I'm super happy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, coming, Drew. Coming out You're of the welcome. conclusion of City of Giants, right? The witch is supposed to help the giants, right? Because there's two giants at the at the front that they p pissed they off the shrouded man so took their legs <laughs> and the witch is supposed to give them their legs back right yeah he's going to use pharaoh to his, his parts um and you know she's going to grab some other parts and things but yeah the hope is that she is able to build them legs um so some some way of mobility to then possibly come back and help kanto uh but you also have that seed of betrayal kind of planted in there so you don't really or from for me reading it i get that seed of betrayal like says she is i think she might but you know can we really trust her yeah but you got this great this great you get this great contrast that um you know is set up where in the first issue of um uh lion hearted you see that the the <clears throat> you know his companions who he trusts the most uh have some different ideas and the Mysterian Witch, which he probably trusts the least, but realizes that she's an asset, you know, in this whole thing. Um, he he puts his faith in both of those, uh, you know, characters, and we have to we're, we'll find out how that faith plays out, and if he's done, if he's placed it in the right people, in the right characters, as the story goes on. And so it's yeah. it's just another way of Canto's sort of courage and his his um, he always. He he's worried that the witch is going to betray him, but he also has this hope that she's not she's not this terrible character that he met in Clockwork Fairies that was taking the wings from the fairies, and he's got to hope that when she did what she did at the end of City of Giants, that that was an indication that he can trust her. And you know he'll never know until and if she shows up and starts fighting alongside him. Um, you know, with, against the Shredder Man. And she's got Fra and Ba, the uh, giants, and we know they're pretty, uh, pretty terrific characters. So I'm Their not dialogue sure in the comics is great. It, it makes for <laughs> that levity with the, the, the seriousness and the emotion, then you bring the levity of the giants. It's just like kind of that, that humor that you need right at the right time. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just upset with how, uh, what happened to their wagon in, uh, <laughs> In Hollow I, I I love the wagon. God, that would be funny if she, <laughs> which brought him, if Elda brought him back. Yeah. So that's a brings me like wagon. To, <laughs> just brings me always to wagon. like another theme. So we got you know size doesn't matter, big things come in small packages type thing. But then there's also that classic: the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Where Canto's going out recruiting, and the so allies like, I don't know, man. Don't yeah. you know what they did to us? And I'm like, hey. Enemy of my enemy, we need him to help beat the Shrouded Man, right? Yeah, but I don't, it's it's very much that theme, but I don't think Kanto looks at it that way. I think he looks at any enemy of mine. Can, Has some good in there's, them? Well, yeah. there's always a way to make them a friend. And, I, you know, we know how this is, Drew and I know exactly how this all ends. And, um, I think that's something that all the readers should keep in mind. That Tell idea us. that it's not. How's it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna put it all out there right now. Well, he he well, writes a bunch of words. I draw a bunch of pictures, <laughs> and we put it into a book, and then you read the book, and then then. And then we both sleep for a week. <laughs> 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 no, but that that idea. You know, the first volume did not have a conventional ending, and we did that very specifically. 
um, this whole this whole series is not going to this whole long journey is not going to have the conventional end um, mm -hmm. that I think any I mean maybe you might expect it given how much you know misdirect not misdirection but right turns we've been taking you know and all these different um, choices but uh, it feels to me in my gut that it's such a satisfying conclusion that it's going to fit exactly with yeah. what we've done up till now oh it better be i know Laura, i'm going to be thinking about <laughs> don't game with the Rosa. whole time every panel i'm like is this is laura gonna like this is Laura gonna like this? <laughs> it, it, it's pretty good. You're calling her at two good. in the we, morning. We I just wanted to call and make sure I'm, I'm thinking this. <laughs> we, we listen. We we didn't we didn't have any fights about the ending, which was good. He 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 pitched me on it. I remember Hollow Men specifically. There there was an adjustment to the end um, because the initial ending I had some issues with, and we kind of workshopped it. And got it to a place we were both happy. Uh, but he, when he did the outline for three and four, the more detailed outline, and it was, I read it and was like, "This is." It feels right. This is really good. It, like I right. was like, I yeah, I was like, I I'm excited to get the drawing this. So that's usually a pretty good indicator when we're both on the same page. Yeah, like we said. First issue for first issue for Lionhearted, fantastic first issue that's coming out this coming week on August fourteenth, right? Yep, July, July fourteenth. That's the same thing when I put the damn date for this thing. It's meant to say. Remember when you're like, wait a minute, we pushing it back to August? I'm living in August, man. <laughs> Time has no meaning. It's lost all meaning. Existence is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So Lionhearted number one hitting store shelves. <laughs> Lionheart number one hitting store shelves July 14th. Now we got what a cover A, there's a one in 10, and there's a one in 25. Yep. Right. So we got um Connor, Connor Nolan. Nolan. Connor and, Nolan is Connor Nolan, Nolan and Jorge Corona. 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 I just had the names in my <laughs> yeah. I'm still thinking Jorge. of August. <laughs> Jorge was great. And um, yeah. there's a convention exclusive re variant that just got announced, right? Yes. And I'm so excited about that one. So excited. It is inspired by um the the movie you'll have to look it up, but the movie poster of That's what favorites. I was thinking. I was thinking of when I saw that. Drew was um, hesitant to do that for a long newer time. Newer kids might think Harry Potter, Potter, but I was thinking never ending story. No. It was I never ending story. It was never ending story. I avoided doing this cover for like a year and a half, two years almost. He had been bugging me for it forever. And I always just like, I hate the floating head ones. I like in how he pulled out a VHS tape. Oh, well, in particular, Dude, this I is the never ending story poster. This, if you can see it, it's signed by the actor who played Atreyu. Oh, nice. And um, my brother got it. I have an identical twin brother and he got one that says to Jeff and he also signed it. So we have matching VHS tapes. Twinsies. It's awesome. Fantastic <laughs> cover. So I'm sure Lala and I will be on the site going, let's both try to get it. And you know, and yes. make Hunger sure Games. Get that. One thing I've noticed is through the success from Canto, from seeing you guys come on our channel, all these other YouTube channels, websites, articles, Twitter, Instagram, I've seen a lot of heavy lifting on your part. I see IDW every now and then share like their convention exclusives, but just from my perspective and Lala, I'd love to give you, get your opinion on this as well. I don't see as much love coming from IDW publisher that I figured you would from something that's such a great story and has received such critical and fan acclaim. Is, is that just IDW's MO? Is that kind of how they are with all of it? I mean, I see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff get shared, but I'm not seeing creator-owned or more independent, which is the swim lane as a comic book fan that I like to fall into more than big two licensed property. But I've seen you guys do a lot of heavy lifting. I'd like to see IDW kind of promote that title more. I think it can get a wider fan base. I also know IDW has gone through some different leadership changes, so this in-house stuff being taken care of. But IDW... 
what's going on, man? Promote your your flagship indie series. Lala, what do you think? I completely agree. I mean, I realize I post a lot. I get that. I post probably way more than the average fan. Um, but I feel like IDW has like so much more to post. They have so much more opportunity to post and like share things. And I feel like they just miss the mark sometimes. And like we should all be promoting it a hundred percent. And I just don't feel the love as much. Yeah, I think there's a lot of missed marketing opportunity there from a series that's yeah. so great from from a publisher, whether they're sharing, hey, this this arc ended, what you know, what's coming up with the new arc. Hey, like we said, reprint the first issue, give it do a free comic book day. There's a lot of stuff out there from an indie publisher, especially when they're trying not to be just an indie publisher. They at one time they're talking entertainment, not just comics. That's such a great IP, great property to build that fan base around instead of just always trying to shell out money for licensed property when you have something in-house that you can grow and nourish that's so well received. Sure. And it's, you know, yep. it's, it's great. Any promotion is, you know, great promotion. And ultimately for creator owned comics, it really comes down to um, you have to be willing to hit, to, to pound the pavement. Yep. Um, you have to be your own biggest fan and, you know, as much support as you can possibly get from your publisher, that's, I, you know, that's, you don't really have a lot of control over that. And we definitely hear what, what you're saying. Um, ultimately, we are, Drew and I are so committed to having this be successful that, um, you know, Laura, you're sharing, um, you know, in your uh, social media presence, particularly about Canto has been so helpful to us. Um, yeah, so so we just say, you know, we have to pound the pavement and ultimately, you know, the cards will fall wherever they fall yeah. for us. Um, I mean, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, you know, me and David kind of from day one always were well aware of what of what the pecking order was and that we would ultimately be our big, our own biggest advocates for the book. Um, IDW has numerous books that they have to promote uh including licensed stuff that obviously comes with a slightly higher monetary value than say we do you know they, they're a company they have to they have to put things in order um that being said you know i i truly believe that the future of this industry is in the indie titles and that something like canto will live on long beyond you know whatever book of the week is pushed out by whatever publisher in a long line of books that are picked up and thrown into a 25 cent bin. Um, and to that end, you know, David and I'll keep pounding the pavement and the more support we can get from the community, the better. Uh, but that it ultimately, those wheels kind of turn on the community and us. And, you know, if, if the day comes that hopefully we we reach that level that a company looks at the book and says there's value in us putting that effort that time into it you know hopefully they'll do it now's a great time to plug your stickers yes yeah stickers coming right stickers. i just yeah i just stickers. ordered some too put it closer to the uh, camera i have not seen them yet fancy oh, that's one and See, oh. that's just the start. We got Funkos. We're going to have fig pens. We're going to have coloring books, but action so figures. Yeah. The The plan is, is that there are three or three more stickers on the way. They are going to be part of uh, sticker packs uh, coming up where I'm still working out the logistics of everything, but I would expect to see those probably by uh, end of the month at the latest. Right. I, I want to just step back one second, and listen to your response about IDW and promoting other books and stuff. I get that, but licensed property is just that. What happens when that license runs out or someone else picks up that license? The majority of their portfolio is licensed property between Ninja Turtles, Transformers, Sonic. I mean, it goes on. There's a couple indie properties, but unless I'm missing something, Canto has probably been one of the biggest ones that they've had some success with like V Wars, some other ones, but Canto for IDW, 
I feel like just my personal opinion, it's like, yeah, it's doing great for them. But, you know, Ninja Turtles and Joe and Transformers is the best when I feel like I want to say taken for granted. That's kind of a little bit strong, but I feel like there's just not as much attention from IDW's point of view being put towards it. And, and I, I kudos to you guys for championing this. And which leads me into one other question is starting at San Diego Comic-Con or conventions when Canto issue one was coming out, how has your presence at conventions changed from then until now? Yeah, so so as far as how Canto has sort of affected our presence at cons, and I mean, we really haven't had cons for the last year, but I guess in the greater community, um, I mean, it really has, has raised our profile. It feels like uh, we've gotten a lot of great Opportunities coming our way. I, I'm doing a new book from Dark Horse called Killer Queens. It's a four issue um, mini series that starts in August. Really fun. Brought brought together an all LGBTQ creative team to um, to tell a big gay space romp that I like to affectionately describe as Guardians of the Galaxy. So <laughs> got announced during Pride, uh, Pride Month and. I was very happy to say that we ended up in the New York Times for good reason, not because something happened. Um, I always say that and then they think, people are gonna think like you killed somebody. <laughs> Newsworthy. No, they did a, a feature on, on pro books coming, comic books for Pride and, and Killer Queens is one of them. And then I'm doing a Firefly oversized one shot that's coming out from Boom in uh, September. Uh, Firefly is my very favorite uh, sci-fi franchise of all time. I absolutely love that universe and those characters. So to get to play in that sandbox is amazing. And those and there's other things that are coming that um, we're a little early in the process, but that's all things that have happened because of Canto. It's people people know have read Canto and they've liked Canto and they they know who we are now. And so mm -hmm. you know we're we're in a good position where we can sort of talk to these different publishers. And, and and come to them with ideas and things um, where we're not just cold pitching uh, things anymore, which is really amazing. So, you know, I all the creators out there, all you need is the one thing. Canto was our one thing. All you need is that one story. So keep creating, keep telling stories, keep putting things out there. And you never ever know when that one thing you're super passionate about is gonna be what, um, you know, opens all the doors for you. Drew? Uh yeah, yeah, that's what I was uh, So who's gonna be like? Yeah. I've gone into like depression and no, I, I, uh, nobody loves me. I'm quitting uh, after this. Exactly. No, um, I it, like David said, Canto kind of opened all of the doors for us. Um, I, I, you know, obviously with COVID, I'm not sure how it's affected our con presence. Uh, I'm actually really excited to get back to cons and see how that goes but it it it's opened up um a credibility line that i don't think either one of us had before and you know um i have a book called uh, the house that i did with philip cv that dark horse th that book is from you know three four years ago now there it is uh and it was completely self-published and now uh, because of canto it, everybody's got a copy uh, because of Canto, uh, Dark Horse was willing to come in and pick that book up and is now publishing it in October. So, you know, it, it really has opened up, uh, credibility with publishers that we didn't have before. Uh, for me personally, as far as projects, I mean, there are little things here and there. Canto obviously eats up the majority of my time right now, but, you know, as we approach approach you know the end of that it's exciting to start seeing things lining up uh with other publishers either in conversations or just through knowing that if i have a pitch that it will get a fair shake when it gets brought in yeah i guess i'll, I'll just add to that it's not like any anybody listening none nothing we do going forward is any sort of slam dunk we're not walking yeah. these places feeling like, don't you know who I am? Oh, no way. I, I totally no, get no. where you guys are coming from. I mean, it's one thing, it's great to appreciate your success, but 
anyone that's seen you guys on our on this channel or any other channel know that you guys are probably two of the most humble, honest, hardworking, creative team in comics. And I've always that's one of the things that attracts me to you guys love having you on here whenever you come on here it's, it's like a, it's just like catching up with old friends every time and not only yeah. our old friends but then we have that one friend canto like hey tell me more about him <laughs> <laughs> tell us everything oh, yeah. he's, he's doing big exciting things <laughs> he's getting ready he just submitted college applications <laughs> you know and i i think uh Z Chun is on, um, he's the showrunner for Gremlins. Uh, that's come, the new Gremlin show that's coming out. And he had a tweet that I thought was really interesting that got a, a, lot, of, a lot of likes. Um, he said, uh, work hard enough that you never have to update your resume again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it means that make, make projects that people know you from. Yeah. And Canto um, for us in the comics community is one of is one of those projects where, you know, I can tell you, I don't have to submit finished pages to publishers for a new book. I don't have to submit a script for a new book. They know from Canto that I that I that I can do it, and so they want to hear about the idea and what I'm right. you know my vision for it. They don't have to necessarily see a specific example of the work for that project. And I think that's where all, you know, indie creators want to be. Just, I have this idea, yeah. you know, I can execute because look at all the stuff that I've done before. And it's great because what, May, 2019, when we first had you on this channel, and if you mentioned Canto in the comic community, like, what's that what's now that? you mentioned canto within comics and and everyone's well aware of it or or should be well aware of it if there's a few people out there i would say that haven't read it or picked it up yet you're, you're definitely missing out and, and they got two trades out there that's worth picking up now super cheap and don't pirate the comics i'm telling you right now don't go pirating but Please if you don't. have a library hoopla app has the trade on there too where you can read the trade but yeah please don't go pirating it I, I just what just what David was saying. Um, I I I am a huge believer in two things. One is one that my dad told me, which is you're only as good as your last project. So that is a huge motivating factor from the art and that everything always be the best that you can make it. And especially because back to the pirating, I understand these things are expensive, and I understand that I we are competing with many other mediums that can be attractive. So we have to give people something that makes them feel like they got their money's worth. The other end of this is that your success is never earned or is never given, it's only granted. Um, you have to earn that every day. If you aren't out there pushing for it, wanting to be there and make content that excites you, then you can't expect, you know, any readers to just come on board for it or for that matter any publisher that that's a totally unrealistic and unfair expectation to have and i don't believe any of that so <laughs> yeah, very nice thank you david <laughs> so just kidding thank you david. you you can draw the rest of it <laughs> oh god <laughs> is, is, are you available <laughs> is there more canto planned after lionhearted how, or and how much? Yeah, there's another. The fourth yeah. arc is the the ending of this adventure. It's called A Place Like Home. How would you pay uh, attention, Brian? He's I know, so but we got, sometimes I ask it was a, it was a question. Viewers. It was a question for, for the viewers. For the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Make so me break have, the fourth wall. <laughs> come on. Uh, yeah, we have a fourth arc, uh, Place Like Home, that's coming. It's probably going to be next fall to uh, give us some lead time to uh, work ahead. I'm going to need uh, it. In the meantime, we've started. So I can't divulge details, unfortunately, at this point. But um, we've been discussing a an, in, another intermediary uh, side questy type story to potentially fill that gap. So. We have some specific ideas about it and it's going to be a fun, I think it's going to be a fun way to fill out the world. Yeah. Um, 
because the momentum from Lionhearted into a place like home, it's like, uh, you know, it's not, it's really not broken except by our schedule. So we want to find a way to put publish, uh, you know, something in between that doesn't necessarily fit exactly in those moments between the end of Lionhearted and the beginning of a place like home. So I think we have a clever way to do that. Mm -hmm. What would also be great in the meantime is if IDW started having store exclusives again for some of those Canto issues. And, and at the bare minimum, we said it a couple of times in this video, at least just reprint issues number one, the first arc, even if they're just like the dollar issues to get them into the hands of fans. You know, there's there's a lot of Canto left on the bone. I think there's a lot of new, always opening it up to new viewership, especially for people that come on late and they start picking up at the second arc. They want to go pick up the first arc. You're trying to pick up, you know, issue number one right now. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Careful how you handle that. <laughs> you need some gloves, it, Brian. I know, right? If, I was just eating if you, wings too. I'm kidding. If you find that in a shop and it isn't like 300 bucks, you better grab that. I I still have, there is eight uh, different covers for the first, you can see behind me, eight different covers for the first um, issue. And I got six. I'm still missing two of them. Um, and unfortunately, as time goes by, it's very, uh, it's getting more and more challenging. Yes. You'd be like, I'm you missing two of the certified. For the movie to get it. <laughs> <laughs> leak it. <laughs> I'll leak it for two 9.8s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Westbrook. I would not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Lala, anything else? I know you have you gotta have some questions. I know, I feel like I asked a lot of questions already. Rapid fire. We're good at rapid fire. I know. I just want to see well, I, am David as love. I need Panther's love to come back. That's what I need. Is that happening? You want her to to, to basically come back to life? Yes. yes. Like is She's she gonna be really it, 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 it won't be what you want. It's going to be a zombie and it's going to be disgusting. Lazarus Pit. Yeah, Lazarus Pit. <laughs> Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Canto's uh, headed to, to some dark places. There's going to be a lot of zombie stuff uh, with the love. It's going to be messed up. I, I'm totally kidding because I can just see the look on David's face. Of, God damn it. Drew's not kidding because he's even said that he wanted to draw some more horror stuff. There, there you go. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm getting my chance. <laughs> that was going to be the next question. Like, you've heard some of the projects you guys have coming up. Is there any other projects on the horizon that you guys can tell the viewers about? Or on top of that, appearances. I, I know, uh, David, you've been doing some signings. What Do you have any appearances um, where you guys are going to be doing some, some signings coming up that people can go and meet you guys at and, and and say, hey, I saw you on Simple Man's Comics. I'm doing two signings next Wednesday, uh, Wednesday the 14th for the release. I'm going to be in uh, Collector's Paradise in Winnetka, which is Southern California, and Collector's Paradise in North Hollywood, which is also Southern California. Uh, August 18th for the release of Killer Queens, I'm going to be at um, Collector's Paradise in Pasadena. So I have three locations, uh, which is also Southern California. And uh, free comic book day, I just uh, confirmed that I'm going to be at Nowhere Games and Comics, which is um, North County, San Diego. Uh, that's uh, August 14th, I believe. And then I will be uh, at Golden Apple Comics on September 21st, which is Saturday. And that's the Saturday after Firefly gets released. And I will have plenty of Canto, um, Killer Queens, by the end firefly i'll have lots of stuff we might have some merchandise and some swag i might have some rarities uh you so know, bring just, your canto uh, 98 he's missing the trade <laughs> yeah if anybody has those two nine eights uh yeah i'll be doing that um i now want to tease a, a project that you and i have been talking about but you uh you got any appearances coming uh, nothing really for the summer. Uh, I'm working stuff out. It looks like though, uh, October will be the big one. So it'll be New York. Uh, we're both talking about Baltimore. 
uh, and we are is it Baltimore Comic Con or Baltimore yeah. Comic Con? Awesome. And we are we are trying to work out something else down there that'll come later on, hopefully. Uh, and there is the possibility that we will be in Utah at some point. Right on. Yeah. Uh, for for a signing. Uh, and the project LTs that we're talking about, it's super early in the process and it's not even confirmed, but I don't even care at this point. Um, but we don't have a publisher to be accountable to, so. <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> uh, we are talking to a major online um, retailer to do uh, an oversized one-shot exclusive horror story. That's just going to be the one 40 pager that's only going to be offered through uh, the retailer and maybe some other retailers with some exclusive covers and that sort of thing. Uh, it's going to be based upon a uh, old story about um, it's called uh, the story about the lighthouse at Eileen Moore, which is a, a island off the coast of Scotland, where in 1900, three um, lighthouse keepers spent two weeks out there. And when the fourth lighthouse keeper came back after two weeks, uh, the three lighthouse keepers had disappeared, leaving food on the table, coats um, still in the rack, boots still in, the, in, in their uh, living quarters. And to this day, nobody knows what happened to them. And there's um, some uh, theories about uh, Irish or Scottish uh, mythology and some creatures that might have come and taken them. So we're gonna do a little twist on that as a horror story. It was Pete's see Dragon. If we can solve, yeah, see if we Pete's can solve Dragon. the mystery of the lighthouse keepers of Eileen Moore. That's awesome. That, we're, we're both really excited for that one. That one, uh, there, there is a lot of, uh, let's call it potential for new avenues of handling the comic industry in that. Yeah, I also want to, you know, Drew, you, your website, you have a website where you sell some of your art up there. And a lot of people, you know, Canto, they, they might know you from Canto, but if you go on even just Google your art, you do, it's great that you guys talk about that horror stuff because you do some great horror art and the horror drawings. Like I said, just Google it, look at the images. And there was times where when we were producing exclusive vans where we were trying to... <laughs> Get to no, and no fault of your own. It's just projects that fell through, or the publishers were like, mm -hmm. like "No, we're not doing exclusives at this time." But yeah, you definitely have um, some great horror art, and to see that with what the story that David was just talking about, I can't wait to see that come to fruition. No, I, I am like so. I you can ask him. I have been so itchy to get back to horror, and I, you know, the the thing is, is that Canto kind of is all consuming right now. But this is an opportunity. This is like the best of both worlds for me. It gives me a chance to take all of the skills I've gotten with Canto over the last couple of years and then play in the sandbox for 40 pages, jump back in to Canto to wrap it up so that I'm, you know, fresh and ready to go. And then, you know, hopefully afterwards, uh, there's something maybe a little more uh, long form that'll be coming up. But I, I am really excited to have something else out there uh, that isn't just camp, though. Gotcha. Laura, anything? Anything you want to ask before we kind of wrap this up? No, I think I got all my good questions in. This was fun, guys. So, thank you for coming on. It's been yeah, such a pleasure you. to talk to you and, and yep. see you semi in person. And Brian, it's always kind of insufferable with you but we'll get to it <laughs> i appreciate you guys I'm out with me. And <laughs> always appreciate you guys coming up i'm glad we got laura on here canto number one fan this is really a lot of fun as always say you guys are always welcome on simple man's comics make sure you guys know go to your lcs if you haven't pre-ordered already and pick up canto 3 lionhearted this coming wednesday july 14th with that being said, guys, this is Brian with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.